What you think, what you think about When you're born into a fire Ooh. Let them burn, let them burn it out Sell them to the richest fire They want to let the world They tell us lies and fade away Fade away We feel betrayed Hello everyone, Poisted here and welcome to another Wild Rift video. Today, I will be showing you a Tank Lux gameplay after the sudden hotfix on Lux and Soraka. And just to set the tone, Lux received a massive nerf. So keep that in mind. First, let's talk about the runes. I usually go for Glacial Augment for my Keystone, although you can go for Airy, which most players do. But for me, I like the synergy between Glacial Augment, Lux's Q, and Iceborne Gauntlet which is normally my first item as a tank Lux. For primary runes, I go for the Courage of Colossus for the extra shielding, Bone Plating for blocking initial damage when you get jumped on, and Revitalize to amplify the shield from your W. For secondary rune, before the hotfix, I go for the Mana Flow Bond. But now, I go for the Transcendence for the ability Haste, then I just go for Boots of Mana to solve my mana problems. Now, let's talk about the nerf that Lux received. Just to put it simply, her base damage on her passive was reduced and her second ability now has a longer cooldown and the base value was greatly reduced. You can read the complete description of these changes on the screen. I think this nerf is directed towards tank Lux. If you have not been updated with Wild Rift news recently, tank Lux gained popularity in Chinese server and has a very high win rate. I myself have 10 win streaks so far with tank Lux at the start of the season, and I haven't lost a single match with tank Lux, including 2 wins after the nerf. The reason why I think this is a direct nerf to tank Lux is because the abilities that were nerfed are scaling with AP. So if you're building full tank, you will really feel these changes. To counteract these changes as tank clocks, you can go for a hybrid build. Supports typically complete 3 items before the game ends. You can go for an Iceborne Gauntlet for your first item, then maybe something like a Ludens Echo for your second item. For your third item, you can build tank again, and I highly recommend building Spirit Visage. I haven't tried this build yet myself because in this game, I still went for a full tank build to see how these changes really affect your game when building tank. Lux is really strong in zoning out enemies. You have a lot of abilities that you can use to do so. You have your E as well as your Q to stop enemies for going in and looking for a steal. So here I managed to hit Soraka with my Q, forced her to use her flash, immediately pinged my teammates that Soraka used her flash, giving our jungler the information so that if he wants to go for a gank later on, he can do so. So here I'm just trying to use my ult to hit the enemies and prevent them for going for the first turret kill. Luckily, I was able to fend them off and Yasuo is trying to chase them down. Let's see if I can get in time to help Yasuo kill the enemies. I think I'm looking for a Q flash combo. Yes, I did, although I missed. So here, I used my W to shield Yasuo. Luckily, he was able to get the kill on Zoe, which is really great for us. Let's see what happens here. Yasuo went for an all-in. I was able to follow up my Q but mistimed my ultimate so it got blocked by the Pantheon. Yasuo got killed in the process. Olaf chasing the enemies down. Was able to get a return kill. So he's really strong in the early game. So I just focused on the virus instead. Was able to land my Q. Jin was able to finish him off. And unfortunately, I was caught by the Zed. Nothing that I can do there. 
And uh, this is where I really felt the nerf that Lux received, especially on her W. I think I was about a second away for having my second ability back up again before Zed showed up in the fight. Had it been that the cooldown on the second ability was not changed, I might have survived the fight there. Here I was pathing towards the Baron lane since I saw on the minimap that Camille is trying to take out Zed. Pushing my limits. On my way. Unfortunately, I did not hit my Q, but Kabil was able to follow up with her ultimate. Unfortunately, we did not expect Pantheon to be there and she immediately got bursted down. Luckily, I was able to survive. Very timely hit on my Q to prevent them from following up. Although I'm really low on health, I decided to assist Yasuo in chasing down Pantheon. I used my flash here just to make sure that I will be able to hit my W on Yasuo to provide shield and prevent him from getting bursted down. I also was able to hit my Q on Zed, making it a 2 for 1 trade. Notice that while my team is taking the objective, I made sure that we have proper vision behind the pit. This is a very basic game knowledge, but still many players are not doing. Having full information on where your enemies are is very crucial in objective taking. This play right here is why I really love Glacial Augment Unlocks. The slow that it provides plus the Glacial Rays when you hit your Q will make it impossible for the enemy that got caught to skip. And when you add Iceborne Gauntlet in the mix, oh boy, it will be a nightmare for the enemy. Especially when you have diving champions on your team, like I have here. Camille was able to follow up immediately and we were able to get 2 kills. This right here perfectly illustrates the nerf on Lux. Prior to the nerf, I would have survived there 100%. The shield used to be so thick. But now, if you are not building any AP, you will really notice the big difference. Even with Revitalize Rune and Revitalizing Grail, the shield feels so lackluster. The key as to why I survived Zed here on such a low health is using the shield before the Zed gets close enough. This way, the shield was able to essentially block his initial damage. Also, hitting your Q is really important. Wait for the right time to use it. In this case, I landed my Q just in the nick of time and prevented Zed on following up. At this part of the game, I feel like going tank on locks is still viable. Although, it is a bit harder to play. Now, you need to be very careful in your positioning since you can't spam your shield as much as you used to. Aside from the fact that the base value of the shield got reduced by almost half, you also need to manage the use of your second ability well since it's on a longer cooldown. Here, I can really feel that Zed got tilted during the prior play when he was not able to finish me off. He didn't hesitate to use his ult on me knowing I'm on full health. I even managed to land my Q and burst him down. Unfortunately, I got sniped by Pantheon but still it was worth it since I'm getting on Zed's skin. Here I was trying to initiate the fight by trying to land a Q flash combo but I failed miserably. Zed tried to go for a pick off on our ADC, but fortunately he has a stasis to dodge Zed's ult. Zed used his stasis as well, but he is already too deep and we immediately went for a punish. I managed to land my Q here on Varus, but he was able to dodge my ult with the stasis play. The rest of the team tried to go all in but was not able to find any kill. At the end, it was the enemy who got a kill on Yasuo 
denying us of our numbers advantage for the elder fight. I thought of going back, but when I saw that my team is not going for a reset, I just used the honey fruit to be able to stay. I thought Olaf is only going for the warding, but instead he went to rush elder, even his smite is on a cooldown, while Camille is trying to go for a push in the mid lane, forcing reaction from the enemy team. This is a reminder to everyone to never rush Elder or any objective for that matter if your smite is on a cooldown unless your enemy is all dead, forced to back away to defend, or at least no enemy jungler to go for a smite still. I was able to perfectly time my Q here on Zoe, getting the pick off that we need, plus I was able to luckily stall the Baron Nasher with my ultimate. Jean also went nuts here getting a peta kill for himself. What's even crazier aside from the Baron steal is that the enemy still has the Elder buff at this point. But even with the Elder, we still somehow managed to win the fight. Jean went absolutely nuts in this fight and got himself a beautiful penta kill. At this point of the game, gold advantage is pretty much negligible. Anyone can win the fight. It just depends on who can get the pick off or who has a better positioning and objective taking. Here I used my Q to check the bush before going forward. You wouldn't want to face check and get killed at this point since the death timer is very long. It's really bad for us that Yasuo got caught prior to the elder fight making us at a numbers disadvantage. I was desperate to get a return kill here going in for a Q flash combo but my ultimate got blocked by the Pantheon. Camille was split pushing while we are trying to buy some time. She was able to force a recall on Zed making it a 3v4 in the elder fight. Camille continued in split pushing and was able to take down the inhibitor turret forcing Zed to stay on the lane. Surprisingly, none of the junglers was able to secure the objective. Luckily, Jin was able to secure the Elder and Camille just ended the game. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And see you in my next Wild Rift video.